Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio, your global feel-good radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is the one and only Rick Barrett. Rick Barrett is an author of two books, Tai Chi Quan, Through the Western Gate, and also Finding You in a World of It, he is a Tai Chi master, and we're going to find out more about that, and also a practitioner of craniosacral therapy in New York City. Rick Barrett has practiced uh, Tai Chi for over 40 years and taught Tai Chi. He has won numerous national championships in Tai Chi push hands. And just recently, I'm so excited for him, he was inducted into the International Chinese Martial Arts Hall of Fame as a senior master. So welcome, welcome, Rick Barrett. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, I'm uh, delighted to be here. I'm, it's a real honor to be back on the show. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Now, everyone, you can find out more about Rick Barrett and his amazing work at rickbarrett.net. And if you are in the New York City area, I'm always referring people in that area to Rick Barrett for craniosacral therapy and also Tai Chi classes. And it's one of my big regrets in life that I don't live close enough to study Tai Chi with Rick Barrett. So Rick Barrett, we talked about how you've been studying and practicing Tai Chi for over 40 years. What attracted you to Tai Chi in the first place? Well, I have to say, uh, like so many people, I mean, first of all, there was a curiosity. I was sort of a window shopper for a couple of years. I kind of dabbled with it. But what really got me deep into it was physical pain. Mm. You know, I, I was having a lot of trouble with my neck and back at the time, and I would go to a chiropractor, get it, get it fixed up, and then it would go out, you know, just days later. It's like, okay, there must be something that I'm doing wrong here that is causing this to keep recurring. So I uh, looked around and found that uh, Taiji had a way of balancing your body mind in a way uh, to allow for things to flow more smoothly, more freely, more uh, there's a, there's a calmness and, but also a centeredness and a, a coordination that comes with that. And that, uh, so I said, okay, I'm going to reprogram my, the way I'm moving. And consequently, um, just a few months later, I'd say it just took me probably a few months to basically be pain free. Of, of, of the problems that have been plaguing me for, for years. So that was, uh, that was, that got me hooked. I said, okay, it worked at that. And then I started to look around, look deeper and realized that it was one of those rabbit holes that went all the way down. And so I uh, uh, kept looking and every time I, you know, open up a new door, there's a whole new set of rabbit holes. So I, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a practice that will, will keep me occupied for for the rest of my life now you have won as we talked about you won many national championships in push hands will you explain for our audience what exactly is push hands like when i look at it it looks like a bunch of guys just wrestling <laughs> like chinese wrestling what is push hands well at at the crudest level that's exactly what it is it's just people kind of pushing against each other. And, and basically the idea is I keep my balance, make you lose yours, you know, and uh, that's, that's the, the essence of it. At a higher level though, it becomes an energy dance and it can be even highly competitive, but it is done in such a way that you are able to sense things before they become physical reality. 
So you're able to tune into, and you as a medical intuitive, you know all about that, the ability to use what the Chinese call tingjin, which is listening energy. You're able to actually feel into the other person's body, mind, and sense their intentions before they're able to even express them in a physical way. And it, uh, so the part of the attraction for learning to, or competing in, in, in these tournaments was to, um, to actually see how much of what I have been learning actually worked. Because it's so much of it is, it's woo woo, it's you know, it's it's fuzzy and uh, and paradoxical, and you until you have a chance to actually test it out in the real world against uh, somebody who has the intention to knock you on your butt, and see what you can do to actually engage this with relaxation, softness, and mental focus be able to to really sense into it then until you're able to actually do that you really don't know what you got so i learned a lot about what i had and i also found out that after even after having some success winning tournaments i realized i wasn't doing it as elegantly as i would like so then i had to go back and start over again and invest in loss this is one of the chinese terms that yeah, that we, we, we use in for, uh, uh, for in Tai Chi is like investing in loss, be able to put yourself in situations where you don't think you're, you have an advantage so that you can solve the riddle. You know, you've solved the puzzle and learning how to do it using Tai Chi principles. Very cool. Now you mentioned Ting Jen. Will you spell that for our audience? And what is Ting Jen? King Jen. Uh, Ting Jin, ah, yes, Ting Jin, that's um, T-I-N-G. Uh, so it means listening energy. And that's, that's when you are, I call it seeing with three eyes. And that's where you're integrating body, mind, and spirit in such a way that you are not limited to your five senses to be able to gather information and to understand what's going on. And so Ting Jin is a, is a heightened sensitivity to being able to sense what's going on without necessarily running it through the limitations of your rational mind. Now, how does the practice of Tai Chi push hands um, increase your uh, capacity for Ting Jin? Well, at the most competitive level, someone has an intention to execute a maneuver and to, you know, push you in such a way as to make you lose your balance. Your ability to recognize where this is going and how it manifests and be able to do that in half a second or less. So that means you're no longer using your rational mind because it takes you about a quarter to half a second to be able to think about anything. And so if you think like, oh, if he does this, I do that, and da, 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 you, you, too late. So your ability to, to read that, and which is athletes are doing this, oh, it's not exclusive to Tai Chi at all. We just happen to have a name for it. Your ability to, to, to sense that without having to think about it put you in the zone, you know, you could, we call it the zone or a state of flow. And that's where you're able to, you're not slowed down by your, your thought process. If we take this practice uh, into a more of a, com, uh, a uh, not a competitive, but a cooperative exercise, you're learning how to sense at a very subtle level without a, a serious threat to you know your stability, but you're able to then attune yourself to subtleties of movement and beyond that into subtleties of energy and subtleties of intention that are what some people would look at that and say, oh, that's superhuman. That's, that's something that you can't do that, but you learn 
to do that because it's you're attuning to something which is happening at a a finer uh, level of uh, substantiality than what you're comfortable with. I have to say, I always love talking to with Barrett because I always come away with such great information. So keep listening. As he's, <laughs> now, uh, there's a lot of scientific studies about the benefits of Tai Chi. What do you personally get from your practice? Hmm, good question. Um, so yes, there, there, there are lots of scientific studies say, okay, this uh, it's great for your balance. It's good uh, for lowering your blood pressure. It's good for being able to sharpen your mental focus, your mental acuity, lots of things like that. And uh, uh, lots of very reputable studies about that. But for me personally, I'm gonna put it in very broad terms. And there's, a, there's an expression uh, uh, that um, called neg entropy. And this is a, uh, a way of talking about reversing the, effect, the natural effects of entropy. Entropy is the, in broad terms, there's lots of definitions for it, but in broad terms, you can say it as the tendency of things to fall apart, to wear out, to get old, to decay, to, to break apart. And everything in the universe, universe every form in the universe, tends toward entropy. That's just because that's that's how we're built. You know, we nothing lasts forever is a you know way we think about it. But neg entropy, or another way of saying it is syntropy, is when consciousness gets involved. That is when you're bringing mindfulness to the form, you create new levels of organization that either slow or reverse the entropy. That is so you don't fall apart nearly as quickly as if you are just blindly following the path of nature. Because nature, you know, nature basically is, is using us to replicate our species. And then after we, we're done with the, the prospects of making babies, uh, it doesn't really have a lot of use for us. And so it just wants to get us, kind of get us out of the way as much as quickly as possible. And so they can make room for the new babies to come along and uh, and do re, you know repeat the the process. For those of us and humans, we tend to kind of want to hang around a little longer sometimes, and uh, and well past the childbearing bearing years. And we uh, so we then have to apply our, our our mental capacity to changing the game. So we're no longer just blindly following the unfolding of nature, we're, we're saying, no, no, we're gonna do something a little differently. And so a lot of what we do in Taiji Chuan is, is neg entropy. It's, it's reorganizing things that we've been doing for decades, maybe you know, like the way you stand, the way you walk, something you've been doing since you're a year old, and you have these very fixed patterns about how it should be done, and in Taiji, we slow it way down and say, okay, that worked, that got you this far, but is that the best you can do? Is that gonna, is that gonna help you live to 80, 90, 100, 120, you know, and, and not only just live that long, but live a healthy life, live a vibrant life, you know? So the uh, neg entropy says, no, we're going to, infuse more energy, more consciousness into our lives so that things are gonna go a little bit better. Great explanation. Also known as anti-aging, right? Right, that's another way of putting it. But no no face creams, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unneeded. <laughs> exactly, not needed. Okay, with that, we're gonna take a break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors. And hang in there and we'll be right back with the wonderful Rick Barrett of rickbarrett.net.
So Rick Barrett, from my limited understanding of your profound work, one of the great contributions that you have made is helping people understand what is energetic coherence. So for our audience, will you explain what is energetic coherence? Love to. Uh, this is right at the core of what I do. And, um, and it probably understanding this principle made a huge shift for me and in, in my practice, but also my, my whole life. And going back to the idea of entropy, things tend to fall apart. And that that's in energetic terms, you can see that it's things starting to disperse where energies collide. And you can see it like say at an emotional level, when someone gets angry, there is a confused energy. If you're afraid, there's a confused energy. If you're worried, you're, the energy is, it's confused. It, uh, you know, it is vibrating in a way that is not harmonious. So if we use the example of a laser as a, um, as a metaphor, we, uh, light, visible light in general is confused energy. It just, it's dispersing in all directions, it's chaos. But whenever you organize light in such a way as that it follows the same frequency in the same direction, same amplitude, it moves, it, we get a laser. And that what's happening there is we're taking this confusion, we're directing it into a, a, a particular line. And with that, we can do all kinds of marvelous things with light that becomes suddenly really, really powerful. You can, know, I, uh, a few years back, I got a LASIK surgery where they, they used a, uh, a laser beam to fry my, uh, <laughs> my eyeballs in such a way as to enable me to go without glasses for the first time in my life. And, uh, you know, we can, you can, but at the same time, you can cut through steel with, with, a, with a laser. You can, you know, we can do surgery with it. We can do, uh, we can do all kinds of things with laser. We can use it for measuring precise distances at, you know, uh, uh, precise uh, distance at, at great distance. So the, uh, if you can take your energy and make it like a laser, that is, if you can organize it in such a way that, it works more harmoniously. It has a positive effect on your body mind. It has a positive effect on your health. It also has a positive effect on your capacity to perform to, and in my case, you know, perform martial arts, but also in, you know, when I play tennis or whatever, if I can, the more coherent I am, the more focused I am, the more my body mind works together as a, in a state of wholeness. It also changes my mental state, my state of consciousness, my state of being becomes very calm and clear. And so energetic coherence allows one to, to access that. A very simple, I'm speaking about it very abstractly here, but a very simple thing you can do, and I highly recommend this, is to just point and reach with your index finger. And just very gently, it's like you're flicking a light switch or something. So there's an intention that goes to your index finger. When you do that, you're isolating your attention and you're taking it away from all the other stuff that's going on. You're saying, no, no, this finger is the thing. And the key here is to be able to feel your finger. It's not enough just to think about your finger you have to actually feel the finger. And that's why I say you can move it or whatever, just so you can get that feeling. And when you do that, just try it right now. You point, you reach with that finger and you feel that. Take a breath. And notice your mind clears instantly. And to the degree that you can feel, it is clearing your mind. It's making it possible to shift your your conscious mind from the the monkey mind that is churning away what psychologists call the default mode network which is the you know the 
the, that ongoing chatter that is updating your narrative moment by moment and allowing you to tune into a whole brain coherence. That is your entire brain starts to work better together and you're able to access parts of your mind that are dormant, that are hidden, that are unavailable to you in your normal state of consciousness. Beautiful explanation. Now, you mentioned that one way that we can access energetic coherence is by feeling ourselves pointing our pointer finger. And I have to share how I've used this in my teaching because I've taught yoga for 27 years. And when I'm trying to teach people how to balance, say how to do a tree pose, one of the things that I say is extend your energy through your pointer finger. And with, whether I'm pointing or I have my hands together in a more traditional yoga hand pose, if I'm just extending my energy and feeling it, it actually improves your balance. Beautiful. So, so can you give our audience some other methods that we might be able to increase our energetic coherence in our life? Other methods of doing that? Yes, I'd love to. The uh, underlying all the methods that I'm going to talk about, you know, is this capacity to learn to consciously feel and consciously move. And if there's one principle that underlies the, uh, the practical application of of uh, the internal arts, it's this capacity to feel and to move. And that's because we have a tendency to think about, and I can't emphasize this enough, but thinking about something is absolutely, absolutely vital for living as a human being. We have to be able to tell a story. We have to be able to talk to each other. We have to be able to remember where we live and things like that. So that requires some degree of thinking. But to the degree that we get stuck in our thinking, and it's the stuckness here that is the problem. To the degree we do that, we are limiting ourselves to a very tiny little little box that we, uh, we are operating in. And once you start to feel or consciously feel or consciously move, then you are using other parts of your nervous system which have been lying dormant. So one can... Let's say breathing, you know, and there's lots of breathing exercises, lots of breathing meditations, and and they're all good, depending on what you want to get out of them. But the one thing that doesn't always get expressed is feeling your breath. So if you just work with me right now and just inhale and just feel the breath coming in through your nose. Feel the expansion of your diaphragm. Feel it pressing down on your internal organs. And then feel your exhale. And feel the breath. Feel the shift in your diaphragm. Feel the shift in your lungs. And notice also that each breath has a, it radiates throughout your body. And whenever you inhale, you're activating your, your sympathetic nervous system, which is the go, go, go part. So when you exhale, you're activating the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest part. So the balance between the two is really important. A lot of people breathe shallowly. It's like, <laughs> and they're breathing just up here. And it's mostly focusing on the in, the in, the in, which is pushing that go, go, go part, which creates anxiety. It creates nervousness. It creates fidgety sense. And if you can, a way to practice this is to, well, let's do it together. Just inhale for a count of, for a count of three, hold for a count of three, Exhale for a count of three. Hold for a count of three on the exhale. And then inhale. 
for three. Hold. Exhale for three. Feel it as you're doing it. Hold for three. So what you're doing there is you're balancing your autonomic nervous system, which is really helpful for dealing with the crazy world we live in now, which is just going <laughs> everywhere you look, there are things which have the potential for upsetting you. And, uh, but if you can just feel your breath and learn to control your breathing, you can then learn to control your autonomic nervous system, which restores a sense of internal calm, internal balance that is missing. So that's one, one way of, of, of doing that. Beautiful. Now, one of the things that I'm always telling my yoga students is your brain, your mind, your mind can either think or feel. And so when you're talking about energetic coherence, Rick Barrett, it sounds like you're getting out of the thinking into the feeling state. Well, actually what I'm talking about, and this is what I call super consciousness, and that is by consciously feeling, you're able to access this other state of being, which allows you to move beyond thinking, but you can think if you want to. So it becomes a both and rather than an either or. It's not like thinking or feeling. It's like, no, no. When you move into a state of super consciousness, you're able to think like a supercomputer. It's a, your thinking accelerates so fast, it's almost like it happened by magic. Whereas, you know, when you're in the ponderous rational mind mode, you're you know, your mode, you're, you're <laughs> thinking like, like an abacus, you know, you're, you're one beat at a time, you know, whereas you know, you're a quantum computer in a super conscious state. And they're like, it's a spectrum of awareness. So it's not like, oh, just any super conscious state is going to allow you to, to think like a supercomputer. You have to kind of get used to it. You have to be able to you get used to being in that state and learning how to process information where you are not dependent on your rational mind. And that takes some practice, but it's also a lot of fun and it creates new neural connections. And so your brain develops the hardware to support this change in your mind. And um, so something, uh, you know, scientists call neuroplasticity. And that is, I'll put it this way, the when I was growing up, you know, the, the scientific fact was you were, had a certain mental allotment fixed at birth and you're, it's just going to get worse from there. And uh, that you can't grow any new cells. You can't, you know, you can't change your mind. Now, just in the last 20 years, it has changed so that, so, no, no, you are creating new neural connections all the way to the grave. It, uh, and you have that capacity, you're, you're creating new ones, you're shedding ones. And what enables you to create more neuroplasticity is novelty. Do something weird every day. <laughs> Just, you know, if you, you, you have a predictable, you eat a tuna salad sandwich for lunch every day, go wild get order egg salad you know <laughs> go crazy yeah it, whatever it is that it changes if you watch the same news program every time because that's the one i depend on flip the channel find somebody else get a different a different voice in your ear if you walk to the store the same way every time take a different way if you drive the same way take a different route throw yourself into situations where you are forced to think. You're forced to, to deal with novelty, and that creates new neural connections, and particularly learning to move in a different way. You teach yoga, and you, you know, you're teaching people to do something which their bodies don't necessarily want to do. <laughs> and that's that part of yoga's uh, 
charm is that it is creating these new neural pathways as it is forcing you to like, oh, I have to tune into my body in a way that I never have before. Now, Rick Barrett, how do you use Tai Chi to flow with life and not take the hits of stress so badly? You know, at the core of Tai Chi is, is learning to engage hardness with softness. That is, you are not doing this all the time, right, with, with life. You're, you're not clashing against life. You receive this and you life presents you situations that hopefully challenge you in some way that, you know, it's going back to novelty. If you're not being challenged, then, you know, go out and do something weird. But the, if life is doing that, so you have a chance to either say, no, that doesn't fit into the box that I have set up here. That doesn't fit into my religious, metaphysical, political, cultural idea of this is the way it should be. And you instead, you say, what else is possible? You like throw something at you and you say, oh, wow, that's what's happening there, huh? That's weird, okay. What else is possible? How can I look at this from a fresh perspective? How can I look at this in a way that allows me to create the next moment of my life? There is uh, in, a, in a comic improv, there's two rules basically that it's yes and. You know, rule number one is you take whatever is coming in that your partner is giving you. And the second rule is do something with it. You know, take it, add your own little bit to it. So the the motto there is yes, and with life. It's like you're not just you're not just passively taking what life has to 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 give you because as we said, as I said before, nature has a tendency to move toward entropy. Whereas if you you say yes and you say, okay, this is what's happening. I received that, I acknowledge that, I take it in. Now what? What do I want to do with this information? What do I do with I want to do with this energy? What do I do with want to do with this these uh, these circumstances? What can I create from this? Great advice. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if you think about what we've all lived through for the past two and a half years through the pandemic, almost everything changed, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So. You know, you can either say, oh, poor me, you know, boo-hoo, life sucks, you know, <laughs> and, or, yes. or, you can, or you can say, yes, and. Yes, and. And with that, let's take another break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors. Hang in there and we'll be right back with the one and only Rick Barrett. So Rick Barrett, if I could summarize what we're learning here from you today, I would say it's how to think like a Tai Chi champion, <laughs> because we all have our own mindset. What do you mean by body, mind, spirit integration? That, that a lot of people hear that and they think, oh, I know what that means. What does it mean to you? Well, it kind of fits in with what I was talking about, about learning to bring awareness conscious awareness to your feeling state. So for many people, there is a split between their mind and their body. And um, there's like there's a, a disconnect and spirit is something abstract woo woo that's out there. And, uh, you know, I do that in church on Sunday, you know, and that uh, body, mind, spirit integration means that we're recognizing that there are at least three main levels of awareness. There's, there's the pre-conscious, which is the body stuff. That is most of what's happening, most of the information that your nervous system is taking in at any given moment is happening 
at below the level of your conscious awareness. You know, until you think about it, you're don't, not really aware of your heartbeat. A lot of people are not aware of their heartbeat, even if they do think about it. <laughs> and you know, they just know it as a, it's probably happening because I'm not dead. You know, but the same thing is the, the functioning of your kidneys or you know, what's happening with your emotions. What's, uh, you know, there is so much going on that it's, you know, I would say a conservative approach would be that you're receiving information at about a million to one ratio between that which you can be conscious of and that which is happening at a pre-conscious level. So most of what's going on in your, in your body mind is happening at a pre-conscious level. Doesn't mean it's stupid. It just means that it's operating at a different level of intelligence than your rational mind can, can figure out. So whenever we bring the conscious mind to that conscious awareness to the feeling. So like we had the, the finger, if I bring conscious awareness to my index finger, who thinks about their index finger? You pointed thousands of times in your life and never got the effect that I'm talking about. But if you bring conscious awareness to this, you feel that finger, there is a shift. And then, oh, you're bringing awareness to that shift. And you're saying, oh, I'm not where I was a minute ago. Uh, my my mind is now so that so now you have this 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 fills you and you moved into a state where you're able to observe both your mind and your body both the conscious and the pre-conscious so you have moved beyond consciousness it's super and that is above consciousness you're able to observe your conscious mind very much like you're operating your mind like you're operating a, a computer you can turn it on, turn it off. You can you can make it do tricks. You can uh, slow it up, speed it up. You can move it in different directions. You can be creative. You can be receptive. There's all kinds of things you can do with your mind. But that state, that state of awareness that allows you to operate your mind is beyond your rational mind. And that's what we, that's what I'm referring to as spirit. And if we are able to then familiarize ourselves with this coordination between the body, mind, and spirit, then it opens the door for infinite possibilities. Now, is Tai Chi, in your opinion, a martial art or is it a spiritual practice? <laughs> it's a... It's a dessert topping. No, it's a floor wax. It's a, <laughs> it, uh, it's both. It, uh, and, and this is something that, that, you know, in my readings from, from the old, old masters, you know, they, they talk about it and that it is your, by going through this, this, this route that I've been detailing here, that is learning to consciously feel and do, you're then able to develop your martial skills, that is your capacity to utilize your body in a way that enables you to feel safe and secure and functioning at a high level and able to handle yourself in many situations where you might have to, to defend your life or someone close to you. And that's the martial arts aspect. But it's also a spiritual practice in that in doing so you are expanding your body mind spirit integration and your super consciousness and allowing you to tap into the mysteries that are so far beyond our capacity to to articulate they are ineffable but allows you to tap into those and resonate with heightened states of awareness that continue to infuse our lives with more vitality, more centropy, it allows you to get better. And, it, and with that comes your capacity to relate to others, 
to extend uh, compassion and uh, love uh, to other people as you become more and more familiar with that. So by having the security of having a martial art and, and the body mind that is integrated to a point that it feels confident, it feels safe, you're then able to expand your awareness and extend outward from that with compassion and love. Now, what is your understanding of chi? People talk about chi, prana, life force. What, is, what does chi mean to you? In the broadest sense, chi is, is used in terms of, of energy. And you know, in, in Chinese literature, it's you know, any kind of energy. But as we, we are using it, particularly in the context of the, the martial arts, we're speaking more of the energy that animates and allows for, for movement, um, allows for expression in the, uh, in the body mind. So it, uh, we can think of it as bioenergy, you know, we, it's something that, it, that ties your bits together and basically describes the relationships that are happening within your body. And chi is not the ultimate, it's actually kind of in the middle. So you have the physicality, which is the densest form of, of substantiality. And then beyond that, you have energy, which is more insubstantial. And it allows for the body. You have a body without without energy, and you have a dead body. It's uh, it, <laughs> it. There's nothing going on there. So it is. It says that oh no, something's going on. Then we move beyond that. We move into mind, which is able to coordinate energy and and physicality. And so that's the next level of substantiality. And then beyond that, we go to spirit, or what Chinese call shen, which is you know that that ability to control your mind, control your body, control your energy. And beyond that, you go into something, you go into the mystery. Now you say that controlling your attention might be, controlling our attention might be our most important superpower. Why do you feel that way? You're either controlling your attention or someone else is controlling it for you. Life is controlling it for you. It, you're being you know, led around by, I mean, so many distractions exist in, in our present world that you can just walk around the arcade and, and there's lights flashing and, and no, no, look at me, look at me. You go on, you know, if you go on Facebook or, or any kind of social media, it's, you know, where, where'd my time go? Where'd my day go? You know, it's a it's something you can watch TV for hours a day. There's all kinds of things that grab your attention. Same thing with people. If you're working with people and they are pulling your attention in a certain direction, directing it or pulling it to themselves or whatever, then you are uh, you are passively following. You're allowing your mind to be controlled by others. When you can learn to control your attention, that is, and attention, I want to be very clear here about that, it's the ability to focus your mind. It's, it's a very simple idea. And some of it's happening at a pre-conscious level. You'll, there'll be things that'll be happening. You're at, you're, you'll be alerted to, to things that you haven't thought about just because like, you know, like a mother who is um, you know, asleep and, and but there, you know, she hears her child coughing down the hallway, you know, she immediately wakes up. That's, you know, that the, the, her pre-conscious attention has alerted her conscious mind and says, this is, this is what's going on. She's, her attention has gone to that. And she could ignore the guy sleeping next to her who's snoring quite nicely, but that, that cough down the hall is, is enough to wake her up. And that's a program that you can set up. You can set up a, pre, a a program which allows your attention to, to be alerted whenever uh, it, you're in a pre-conscious state. But your ability to consciously direct your attention is, is, is super important. So like you're, you know, 
your ability to bring your focus, let's say, you know, just to be able to bring your focus to feel your left hand. And when you do that, that's, that's getting all the attention or just about all of it. Your, and what this does is it lights up your left hand. The chi goes to your left hand. You bring it to the right hand and you're letting go of the left hand. And you're saying, oh, I'm, I'm, my chi is going here now. And consciously going back and forth, left hand, right hand, left hand, you're flipping your attention. And what's happening is you're building new neural connections just by that simple action of alternating your awareness, that simple action of flipping back and forth between left and right, because the left hand is, is governed by the right side of my brain, the right hemisphere, the, the right hand by the left hemisphere. And whenever our, the two hemispheres don't talk to each other much until we introduce them, until we get into a state of coherence, at which point they will start to fire together and you get hemispheric integration or hemispheric coherence. And then allows your whole brain to start to function at a much higher level. So Rick Barrett, final question for our audience. What do you consider the key to getting the most from your practice? I'd have to say it's the feeling thing, right? The one thing that, that enables you to get in there and take it out of abstract woo-woo kind of, you know, something somewhere happening maybe and allowing it to be like, boom, you're able to do cool stuff with it. You know, you, uh, you know, you brought up a story uh, before the talk about, uh, about Maria stopping a bicycle with her, uh, you know, she was uh, crossing a busy street, a, a street in Manhattan after, after a break and there was a, a, a truck double parked and she, uh, she looked, at the way traffic was going, it was a one-way street. She looked at no traffic coming. And so she stepped out to go across the street. It was an, and, and a bike that was going the wrong direction, was going opposite of traffic. It was a delivery bike, one of those big, heavy delivery bikes. And it didn't see her. And it, it came barreling right at her. And at the last second, she just stuck up her left arm, reached out with her left arm, and stopped the bike cold. And... Uh, and in doing so, she crushed the the wire basket of uh, that that was holding the the food and and stopped the bike. Did not lose her balance, and and you know, at the time she was she was uh, you know a hundred and ten pound sixty year old woman, and, <laughs> and and she was able to to stop it cold. The guy was like freaked out because like you know he thought he was gonna he, he thought he had killed her but no and she just reached reach over and said are you okay you know <laughs> so she was able to handle the energy take it in and redirect it instantly and that's kind of what we're talking about here it's not the ability to bust face and kick ass it's the ability to live life and feel safe in your own skin You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Our guest today has been Rick Barrett, author, Tai Chi master, craniosacral therapist. You can find out more about the one and only Rick Barrett at his wonderful website, rickbarrett.net. And remember, when you bring yourself into energetic coherence, magic can happen. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.